Are you trying to just level him out? I'm just trying to level him out. Good luck, good luck. Huh? Good luck, man. Good luck. Let me see you try. Man, I know more time when you bring your cousin, yeah, yeah something's then. going on. Oh, and no, he, no, no, and no, he's, no. he's usually here to kind of just make sure. That, Everything's that's how calm, I've seen man. it. More time when he's here, something's happened. But he's sort of there just to, to make sure that me. you're all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Make Come sure on. that you don't do something stupid. Do you know make... what I know it is? I can see by the way he looks at me certain times. He's like, uh, okay. Like yeah. He's, taking it, he's thinking how he's going to deal with this right now. Let me see. No, do you know what no. it is? When I see you, more time I'm like, okay, you're here what? to protect him what? in some Keep mental capacity. <laughs> That's the way that I see it. And so I'm like, all right, some, something's happened. Something's gone on, but... Please. Thank you so much. Bro. Huh? No, don't, don't worry. Hold on one second. I don't think I've got cutlery as well, so yeah, like a little fork or something. Or a spoon. spoon what, food, the, uh, food? Kitchen. Spoon, food? Spoon is a sensational. Uh, food, thing. food. Yeah, man, let's get a look at Four Seasons, man. Strongly? Yeah. Yeah, man. yeah come on, man. Huh? Look Four Seasons and that. Come on, man. <laughs> I'm hungry, man. Yeah, he's outside, man. Oh, your timing's impeccable though. As soon as you get your food line and that. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, that was cold. Yeah, 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 yeah. So no, uh, anyway, just for like, for the people then, Pope's come here with his cousin. Yes. And so usually, <laughs> usually when I see the cousin, I know that they, this, it's just a mellowing out kind of, something's good. That's how I see it. Maybe yeah, I'm yeah, looking yeah. at it wrongly, but when I see you two together, I'm like, okay, cool. You're, you're all right today. You're gonna be okay today. Yeah, I feel today. good today. <laughs> now is it the other way around? Nah, it's just we're just chill, that, man. He was obviously I was telling um C to come because I was gonna bring the kids, but okay, bro, I can't lie to you. <laughs> I can't lie to you. Usually every you know Friday morning, I just look at all the things that I favorite. Go through the howlers and go, well, choose this one, choose that one. Couldn't do it today. Papa, no problem. Come on, bro. All right, let me go. Papa. All right, cool, man. Papa. Yeah. But big man, I'm changing my name. <laughs> 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 I didn't preempt the Friday morning being so mad and because my procedure for like my yeah, Friday yeah, yeah. is set off. in a particular way. It's thrown off today. Do you know where I'm coming from? Yeah, I got them their yeah. food, had their bath, they've done everything they needed to do. Yeah. But they just don't care, man. When they want their attention. They don't need their attention. And I have to give it. Yeah, of course. Do you know why? They go back tomorrow. Oh, okay. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. So they like, sometimes you just got to let them run wild and do their thing and just whatnot. I was, I was, I'm not going to lie. I was looking forward to seeing them still. I'm sorry. But it's all right. It's okay. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, I was looking forward to it. But if you ever can, I know it's difficult, but whenever they are here and that, whatnot, like like bring them in. Even if, you get what I'm saying? But just the nice little walk through. I like when they yeah, just come and walk through. Just walk see around. Them, yeah, you're right. No, you're right. I need to come down and I see them anyway. You know when people make that? He's helping you out. It's, it's always both ways. Yeah, it's both ways. <laughs> I just like their little walk through. Yeah, I know. I like their little walk through. They just come in here, yeah, energy, assess yeah. the vibe, and then they go in there. Um, Thank you, my brother. What are you saying? So what, you're going to just do, like let that get like like cold? No, I'm just going to look at it. All right. Let it so, get cold. All right, because... I know they hate when I eat I, on the phone. I'm not going to eat on the pod. pod I'm absolutely. Gonna eat I'm just going to let you know I'm doing four seasons. But you got enough talking to do today. Because well, I've got gonna, bare things. Huh? There's bare things that happen. Listen, bare things have but, gone on. But firstly, yeah. um, I just want your thoughts on Halloween. Okay. I want your thoughts on Halloween. Because I saw you sharing some. So I want to go through it with you. Because I'm with you. Two things. Go on then. Uh, people were saying to me, are you not taking the kids out for Halloween? I said, they're Muslim. <laughs> <laughs> it's haram. Mm -hmm. If we're going to do this, let's do it properly. And I also believe... Adults have stolen Val Halloween. Absolutely. Halloween is for the picnic. When Absolutely. I was younger, I remember loads of children celebrating ha Halloween. Now it just seems like an excuse for a girl to wear skimpy clothing, which I'm not against, carry on doing it. And it's also an excuse for every single guy to dress like a rapper. It stinks. <laughs> you, look, you, you know what, you're not even doing Halloween properly. You're not even trying to mix it up like 50 cent. What, you're gonna do a white t-shirt from H&M and some stupid little, oh, come on you lot, man. Get back to the picnic. The pitney make more of an effort than the adults. Yeah. So I feel like Halloween, next year, people, if you haven't taken your child trick-or-treating, but you can find yourself at r and I feel like you're doing it all wrong. <laughs> I'm not saying no about r and but a pitney them at home, they want a Kit Kat. So give them a break. Yeah. This is just my view. No, I hear it still. You know what? I'm not going to... Because obviously I had a, a, a Halloween edition of R&B and Slow Jams on that. And to be honest with you, yeah, 
obviously it seems cool, like the fancy dress thing. But you see, for me, in my mind, it is just the longest thing ever. I just can't be bothered. Yeah, but, but you, you were good though. Sorry to cut you. Another thing I got to throw in, it's Halloween. It's not fancy dress. It's Halloween. Right then. It's not I'm going to dress up like a rapper or a nice guy. It's Halloween. On top of that, why is it when you even do the fancy dress? I don't even know who the hell you are. What is this? Yeah, like why is Halloween. everyone trying to be sexy still in Halloween? That was my thing as well, you know. Obviously, I wanted to do, my initial thing was, I wanted to do James Brown, but I wanted to be a nitty version of James Brown. That's funny. To bits, yeah. But I couldn't find the attire. Like, uh, and the thing is, wherever I was finding it, it was super high in fashion, which meant I would have to spend bare dough. And I'm like, I'm not gonna spend bare dough on stuff. I'm just never gonna wear it again. So obviously Taser told me that he was doing, they were, that him and the man they were doing the Call of Duty thing or whatnot. Terrible. So terrible. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do that, but I don't wanna do, I don't wanna be nice. I don't wanna look nice. Obviously, I knew the man they were going to do the sexy thing and what, not the chocolate thing. I knew oh. that they were going to do that. I knew the man were going to oh, do that. Boring. But you know what it is? I did not want to look nice. I wanted to fling on a wig, put in some mashed up tea, and get into character. Bro, you see, when I was there, yeah? You know, I was like walking around like a nitty. Oh, I saw. People were walk, coming up to me like, yo, Chuck, what's going on? No, I was just going, I was doing this. I was walking up to Gallant, huh? You got pictures? Yeah, I got something. You can put it on the screen. I'll send it to, e to EA There's as well. But Chuck, you were meant, that's what you were meant to do. When I saw you do it on the camera, I said, yeah, Chuck, he's, yeah. Do you know what? I couldn't, I didn't even know how much I was going to get beat in character. I swear. Do you know what? I thought in my head, obviously I'm going to put the thing on, I'm going to put the tea in and I'm just going to be stupid for a minute. Bro, I was stupid for the night. Yes. Yeah? I just, I pull it on and I was like, I don't know, I just was just being, bro, I was being dumb. And it was only until afterwards, I was like, you know, there's people that came up to me that I hadn't seen for a while, you know? Mm. There was like a couple of people I had not seen. There was one girl, in fact, um, I had not seen this girl for like, what, five, six years? Mm. She's come to support man's thing or whatever. Does bro, that? when she's come to say hello to me, I'm a nitty in this moment. Yeah, I had to go back, I remembered afterwards, I was like, oh shit. I didn't even say hello to her properly. I had to go back and send her a message on Instagram and say, do you know what? Like, I remember seeing you and whatever. I'm sorry. I was just, I was in character. I just came out of character when I started running tune. But even then, I am actually in character when I'm running tune. Before I start, I am think sometimes I'm thinking to myself, what am I going to do? How am I going to do this? Whatever. There's even times when I'm doubting myself where I'm like, fuck, like, what, like, what does this look like? Bro, as soon as I play the one rhythm and I touch the microphone, I am Stone Love. I am Base Odyssey. I am I am I am Kilimanjaro. I am Ricky Trooper. Yeah? This is it's the auto ego just kicks in. Then afterwards, I'm like, oh rah shit, I really did that. <laughs> <laughs> like I swear down that happens to me. I like so that. So I was in character the whole night. That's good. Yeah, oh, I like yeah. that, I like that. To fit out and be that person without having to worry about you thinking you're gonna affect that your actual soul, because a lot of people think about image or ego or how they're gonna appear in it. But with the fancy dress, yeah, I don't care. There you go. Yeah, I don't care. There you go. It allows you to live like that. You, yeah, you you can you be if you are an if you have an inner weirdo in you, which I definitely do, bro. Mm. I am a weirdo. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. what I get an I get an opportunity to express this inner weirdo on, and it's normal today. I'm doing it. <laughs> I'll tell you that now. It's I'm the one time it. you can get away with it. Why yes, not? Exactly. You, you see the gal then? Yeah. <laughs> all year round now, I'm going to be a lady, this, that, and the other. All of a sudden, Buzz Lightyear wears minimal clothing. I didn't know Buzz Lightyear was a gal and had back off. Yeah. About to infinity. Buzz Lightyear in camel tongue. What? <laughs> it's nuts. To infinity and beyond. Big man, I don't want to go no more. I don't want to go. <laughs> I want everyone to give Halloween back to the picnic. And then, if you have to address yourself after, Chucky, this is my first meal of the day. Yeah, my children have eaten twice. Let them go first. Just for context, it is 1.45. Come on, man. Struggling. <laughs> Some parents now, it's the other way round. Yeah. You gotta be looking at their mum like, oh, mum, what, no fancy dress for me? Nah, I'm sorry, man. But you know what? Like, it's Instagram, isn't it? Like, the Instagram, make yourself look good, get the likes, so on, so forth. I'm with it. But yeah, I just felt like it belongs to the children. That's me, though. Also, as well, yeah. If you're gonna take your kids doing trick or treating, yeah, can you let them know that trick or treat is not a sound? 
it's trick or treat. Yeah? So when they're knocking on the door, you see kids will knock on the door and they say trick or treat, but they don't know that they just, they don't know that they're saying words. They're just <laughs> saying a sound. They just knock the door and they just say the sound, but it's trick or treat. So when my door knocks now, I say trick. These kids are looking at me like I'm f- crazy. <laughs> they don't know what's going on. But you just said trick or treat. Do you know well, why? In fact, huh? Do you know why though, innit? Go on, why? The parents have gassed them saying, yeah, get your bag, you're just going to get bare things. No, yeah, no, 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 no. Let them know what trick... Do you know what? You lot, let's do a history lesson. Go back and find out what Halloween's about and then move forward. You're watching too much American shows, watching Look My Wife and Kids, you see it and then boom, you want to participate. I don't know. I wouldn't be mad though if a kid, if I if I open the door and I said treat, no, if I open the door and I said trick and a kid said, I ain't got one, I just come here for something. I'm giving him everything I got. That's fair enough. Because you know what? I respect it. You understand that you're saying words. Yeah. You've come to the door brazen without no trick. But you're saying it anyway. When I ask you for one, you tell me you ain't got one. You just come in for something. I'm giving it to you. But if you just come and you just say the sound and you don't know what's going on, really, I shouldn't give you nothing. You don't even know what you're saying. This is life lessons for children. And for parents who sent their children out. Do you know what? Did you do trick-or-treating as a youngster, by the way? Sorry to go left. Uh, Like, I think maybe once. But then I did it once maybe as a youth. I don't even... Yeah. Yeah, like one time on an estate, and then yeah, there was another time where it was. I, I'm not happy. Like I, I'm not proud of what we did. I'll be honest with you. I'm not proud. They of just it. done bare tricks. No treat. Brother, so we wait. just eggs. Egg and tissue. Egg, egg and that's flour. Just hooliganism. Yeah. That's just, that's just... Do you know what? When I think back at that, I think, oh, what was we doing, bro? We was the knocking on people's door. Poet. Hmm? We knocked on people's door. We said trick or treat, and any time someone said trick. Any time someone said trick, it was egg and flour on their rass. But we have to understand that is the nature of the holiday. You can't get upset with what it is. Could you imagine opening your door and someone throwing egg and flour at you and running off? Not Sorry. one egg, you know. How many? All the man them had eggs. So you had a box of six? <laughs> well, we was... <laughs> hey... I don't know how we didn't get into big trouble for that or even got beaten up for it, to be honest with you. But it's trick or treat. Yeah. Obviously, if the kids have done it to me, I would send my younger cousins over there and sort the situation out. You can't throw an egg pump That's in my crazy. face. That's crazy. Egg and, f- egg and flour. Nah, not, not like, it's one thing to just have the flour or just have the egg, but the egg and the flour together. Mad. Did you know that if the pumpkin isn't outside your house, you're not involved in Halloween? All right. I had no pumpkins outside my house. Did your door still knock? Yes. All right. <laughs> I told that you to go home. Did you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that you? <laughs> yes. That you had to go home. They realised I'm not on it. Because my road is obviously my area, affluent, yeah. middle class, yeah. long hair, white people, guys and girls, everyone's just having a good time. Mm. Don't knock on my door. When I was young, my mum told me that's begging. Don't bother do it. So yeah. I'm, not, I'm not doing it. I don't like the pagan holiday. That's season. funny. I bet that you went out, back out there and said, you know, don't knock on that door. You ain't getting shit. Of course not. <laughs> Come knock on my door and beg. Nah, man, I'm not on it. Bare but, sweets and that, anyway. But yeah, man, Halloween. Get back to the youth then. Um, okay, couple things. Actually, I'm going to go for a couple of things that I've got here. Mm. Um, the world's going crazy though, Shaki. We're going to talk about the world going crazy. We're going to talk about competi- competitiveness in rap. We're going to talk about Dizzy and mm. Wiley. We are going to talk about. I got some. I got honourable shouts, and I've also got something that I want to say to insurance companies. But before we do all of that, yeah, Tyson Fury, bro, Tyson Fury. You know what? And I said this the last time. Both of them, both of those fucking, both of them got away with murder over the last month. Yeah, both of them did. Both of them got the absolute rub of the green. Now look, to be honest with you, Tommy probably, I don't know, like it was a, it's a funny one. We didn't even discuss that here on the pod. But the reality was, this is not supposed to be close anyway. I don't care what anyone tells me. This is, boxing is in your bloodline and KSI, with all due respect, even though I know that he's taking the sport seriously and that, he is a YouTuber by DNA, yeah? So this is not supposed to go that way. That's that. Okay, cool, fine. I'm a UFC man. So I know a lot about Francis Ngannou. 
I like him. I respect him. I respect the fact that he left uh, for principal and money issues with um, Dana White. He has not had a fight for two years. He has not gone in a in a in a in a. I think he boxed when he was younger, actually. And when he was in France, I think he boxed for a tiny bit. But that was probably when he was about 16 years old. Yeah, he has gone into the ring with the heavyweight champion of the world. And let me tell you this. Yeah, I know people have put out stats and said that, you know, Tyson Fury landed the most punches or whatever. Let me tell you this. Yeah. At the bare minimum, that was a draw. And let me tell you why at the bare minimum it was a draw. Because you see that elbow. Did you see that? Did you oh, see that, yeah, elbow? I saw that elbow? Did you see that elbow? Who else threw elbow? He is lucky. <laughs> he is lucky, yeah, that um, Francis is an MMA fighter. Because if he was a boxer and he would have got that elbow, he would have dropped on the floor, he would have made a big deal out of it, they would have looked back at that and they would have said, that's a point. Deducted. You would have got a point deducted. But because Francis is an absolute animal, he just nyammed the elbow. I just carried on going. Big man, do you know, hey, do you know an elbow in the face? From a Tyson punch in Fury. the face. A punch in the face is a madness. An elbow in a face from a man who's six foot nine, 788 pounds. Says it, the N word. <laughs> just bare stuff <laughs> like. <laughs> bro. It stinks. See, it's, that shouldn't be close to me. No. It shouldn't be close to me. Honestly, obviously you know how I feel about Tommy Fury. I don't actually. Him and Molly May, I think is a joke. Oh, yeah, but I don't they... like the whole thing. Oh uh, yeah, but I don't they... like the whole thing. I don't. Oh. I, I don't like corny stuff, so that's very corny to me. But if I ever saw a video of Molly May, like like the first time, him coming home and him doing a big hunger after beating KSI like that, I'm talking scraping it. Yeah. I'm talking Man United 1999 Champions League final last minute Ole Gunnar Solskjaer type goal. Mm. If you celebrate that in a big way, you should be ashamed of yourself. I've never in my life, and obviously I'm comparing it to. I don't know much about boxing, but I've never in my life seen any player come from the streets straight to the Premier League and go mad. That just don't happen. No. There is a little process, like Jude Bellingham. And then you finally get up there. You don't just go from, I'm sitting down in the street, apart, unless you're Wayne Rooney, again. Mm. But at 37 years old, for Francis to come in and do that, and KSI is at what, 28, 29? Yeah. They're not even young guys. They're coming at later stages in their life. To people that have done it their whole life. Since they was two. No, nah, I'm sorry. Both of them, although they won, should be very ashamed of themselves. I'll be, honest, I'll be honest with you. I, I, like This would be something for Dan, but I feel as though that there was probably... Had the... In my opinion, this is my opinion. Had the right verdict of happened, it would have been the most embarrassing... Embarrassing outcome to happen across all sports as far as i'm concerned of course but even with him being the winner i'm still gonna say that that is a lot more embarrassing than what happened to aj when he went to america for his first fight and he lost against andy ruiz yeah that's much more embarrassing because, than what happened to aj much because more. the reason being obviously that was an embarrassing moment purely because that wasn't the guy that he was supposed to fight well as you say it's embarrassing it's boxing in it yeah but that wasn't a guy who was supposed to fight. But this guy was still ranked as a top 10 fighter. He was not a, he was not a dim don. You mm. get what I'm saying? He's still out here doing his thing. Yeah. yeah? So there was that. So it just, what, it just was one of the things where I think AJ was going to America. It was supposed to be the time where he was making a statement. He was breaking America. I remember I went there with JD. And when you, when you went to Madison Square Garden, there was like bare posters of AJ all over the place. So it, like, it sort of spoiled the thing a bit. But this here... This here, in my opinion, is so much more embarrassing than that. Because I, like, one thing I do believe, if I'm being objective, is that regardless of how long they've been fighting or whatever, with um, Francis being as big as he is, mm. at some point within a 10 round fight, regardless of whether a man is the heavyweight champion in the world and he's been fighting for, like you would expect that at some point he might land one bang because he is a fighter. And that one bang could trouble you still. And you couldn't be mad at that. The fact that like, if he's just got you on a one bang thing or whatever, and then, you know what I mean? He's, he's massive. 100%. But the way that he fought, the way that Tyson fought, and like, even the commentary before that, what was it? What was the thing that Tyson said, EA? Um, it was something about the tennis, um, tennis the tennis thing. What was that? He said, um, he said, 
Francis Ngannou is like a professional table tennis player about to play against Novak Djokovic. Yes. Djokovic in centre court at Wimbledon. That's it. That's the one. Like, and then for that to happen like that. Francis was like, yeah, I think he made a, yeah, he definitely made a joke about that as well because he was like, yeah, well, I'm a good, like, ping pong player, innit? Like, I'm all right at it, innit? But, he, he, but even in the fight, so Francis, I wanted to know why Francis done the dance in front of him. I was like, why did you it's do that, that dance? I come to find out at the start of the fight, Tyson Fury comes up to his face and says to me, I'm the principal, I'm going to take you to school. <laughs> and then four <laughs> rounds in, you're on the floor. Nah, man, this stinks. It's it like, stinks. even after you do that, even after you do that and you lose, even if Francis then had a shit, what was it, six rounds after that, yeah, that you can't take nothing away from him. He knocked you down. But he didn't have a shit um, six rounds after that. He didn't. So it's it's mental. It is actually mental. Both of those Furies must be sitting in a room, should be sitting in a room together, reevaluating a lot of stuff. You fight two people that are not even professional boxers. You scrape victories. You cannot go home with a big smile on your face. I'm sorry. If Arsenal play Farnborough tomorrow <laughs> and we scrape a 2-1 win, I'm not celebrating the goals. I'll celebrate the other goal. <laughs> it doesn't feel right. You meant to beat that six seven nil and keep it moving. To be in, in the fourth round, I'm seeing man on the floor, and I don't like the way at the end of the interview you tried to brush it off like, oh, it's nothing. Fall down and get up and carry. It. No, whatever. You fell down. You're startled. Mm. You got up and you 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 didn't like walk gracefully to the corner. You walk to the corner like, what the hell is going on, big yeah, man? Yeah, yeah. And then I saw that blank expression in your face, like. Yo, then you take a look at this. I don't know nothing about boxing. I'm just looking at like behavior patterns. Yeah. The behavior patterns you came up with at the start, after you got knocked, you were kind of a little bit like, what's going on, trying to suss it out. And then it looked like you were going for gold at the end. Mm. Again, I don't know the technicalities you would need done here. But mm. if you ask me as a fight, my man got beat up. I just saw a man get beat up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know the technicalities and if you're moving around the one person static, how much more points you get. I don't know all of those technicalities. But if I saw that on the roads, if I was outside the club and I saw that, I'm sorry, Mr. Fury, you got beat up, bro. Even the next day, your face, horrible. Well, bro. that's why you would say, that's why sometimes some people would say, life just isn't fair. Because when there's an establishment, like let's look at like the business aspect of what, of what could have happened if Francis did win. Mm. That would look crazy to boxing. Because he's an MMA fighter. So for him to come in and to not have, not only has he not, f he's not fought in two years anyway. Adding to the fact that he's never had a professional boxing fight. For him to go there and beat the, he not only the heavyweight champion of the world, some people, not me, but some people regard Tyson Fury as one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. For him to come there and do that, just throws a massive spanner in the works, especially with the Saudi Arabia business that they've got going on. Because obviously, part of that was supposed to open up the door for you know other fights where yeah. it comes to him and Usyk or him and AJ and like there's just a whole thing that like a plan that they had going on. Also, he was supposed to beat Francis and then fight again in December. He was supposed to fight Usyk then, and he kept going on about you know in an interview before. They were saying to Tyson, it seems like Usyk's not really ready. Like, are you, is this fight going to happen? And he was like, it has to happen. He signed the contract. If he doesn't fight me in December, he's getting sued. That was his words. Now, after getting punched, licked down, black eye, this, that, and the fourth, he's talking about, I'll see you next year. No way. Yeah. No way. Bro, he's That's... <laughs> the, Bro. Thing, the thing is, I will say this though. Go on. I remember Tyson Fury in a situation where he seemed a little bit depressed. Yeah. Down. Everyone was against him. And he come back on a mad thing. Yeah. So I will give the guy the benefit of the doubt. And I want to see how he approaches the next fight. Now he'll, come, he'll come back and he'll win. I think he'll win convincingly next time. But I just think that... that Even would... for this to happen, it's bad. Yes. Yeah, and, I think that, and I think that would upset me to be honest with you. If he came back and he won, which I do believe that he will do, he'll come back and win convincingly, it will upset me because this will be a way to paper around the cracks of the fact that Francis 
should have won the last time. Oh, no, no, it's he not. He should have. No. He should have. That should have been a W, in my opinion. Or a draw, at least. I'll be real, Chucky. Not with the meme error. Not with the meme error. Everyone before 2012, 13, that made errors in the public eye, they got away with murder. They're cool. Mm. If you get knocked down today as a boxer, yeah. you can forget about it. Molly May can forget about it. Big man Molly June can forget about it. Everyone can forget about it. Do you know who don't forget? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you will never forget. So although we might go, it might paper over the cracks, it won't. There'll just be a whole thread somewhere on Twitter of the reasons why it stinks. Yeah. So I'm glad that there's that sort of horrible imbalance in life or balance in life where you might be happy. Just go to Twitter. We'll find out how happy you really are. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm also just last, I'll say as well, I'm, I'm kind of glad at the fact that like, because AJ always seems to get a lot of slack when it comes to like fights not being well. I mean, Eddie Hearn gets it a lot to be honest with you because that's his promoter, and maybe, maybe rightly so. We don't know what's going on, but for a long while it was like this fight was falling through, that fight's not happening. We all want to see these two fighting, it just never seems to be happening. Then you got Tyson saying, What well, I would fight him free, I would. Then it's like, Oh, I need half a billion, and then he's all over the place. And at first, my thinking was, Why don't these two just fight? Like, what the hell is going on? But as time's gone on. I've started to realise, now, do you know what? In my opinion, it seems like Tyson is the issue. The, uh, one of the guys that are on Talk Sport, he mentioned something really interesting where he was like, you know, he said, he's saying all of these things and he's making it seem as though AJ doesn't want to fight him. And that was the almost the consensus at one point that AJ didn't want to fight this Don, yeah? But then it's like, yeah, you're fighting for free. Then it's half a billion. Then it's got to happen here. Then the the last one was... He's got to sign the contract by 5 p.m. today. And it's like, you know how these things go. There's lawyers, there's things you got to go through the contracts or whatever. He's like, someone said to, to Tyson, listen, just leave it until at least the end of the day. Tyson was like, no, it has to be five o'clock. They're like, please just leave it until we, we got it. We'll have it sorted out or whatever. What did Tyson do? Five o'clock, he didn't sign it. He's not fighting. We're not fighting. And it's like, oh, this whole thing stinks. So, I hear that. so, so when you get moved to like this, in a situation like that, it just doesn't smell right to me. I feel, hopefully you become something that rhymes with crumble. Because that's what you did. Humble. Please, because right, right now you can't be moving like, because I understand beforehand when you haven't lost why you're moving so mad. But you see when you lose to a man that hasn't had a fight in two years, He's the same age as Wiley. From Cameroon. <laughs> reposted by Samuel Etu. Yeah. Not even a professional boxer. When you lose under them circumstances, the whole world's watching. I didn't pay for it. I got a little illegal stream, but don't Strongly. actually say I did that because it's allegedly. I just think, personally, you have to drop your value. You have to decrease everything. You can't have the same vim. You can't talk about half a mil. You can't talk about any of that stuff no, no more no. because you're not of the same worth to a certain extent no. you may get the same attention but in terms of the credibility of a fighter mm. your credibility has gone down bro I don't care if you won that fight you, no. it was about like hairs on your chinny chin chin if we're being totally honest it's a bit. and again when I was watching the fight I'm mm. watching the first four or five rounds I'm like has Tyson Fury won any of these rounds I don't really know but he doesn't look like he I feel like he's been beaten up in five rounds Yeah. so then how does he even lose this fight my whole mind is like I'm like how do you lose this fight Francis like Tyson Fury started picking up pace and I started going, okay, like by the sixth round. Yeah. For, but I'm thinking to myself, by the sixth, seventh round, it's too late. Yeah. That's why when the end result comes out, out of my ignorance, I don't go robbery. Okay, I did go robbery. But I'm, now that I've calmed down, I'm like, maybe there's technicalities within the sport that I'm unaware of. Um, the same way someone in football might go, oh my God, he's got 20 goals a season, top goal scorer, he must be the best striker in the Prem. I can go, no, let's watch the games. Let's yeah, take a yeah. look at his performance. Yeah. I'll tell you the best striker, irrespective of how many goals he scored. So maybe there's technicalities like that within boxing that I'm unaware of but right. from just watching it like I said both Furies should be furious yeah, right then right then and it, to, to be honest with you both of those fights they weren't robberies I just think that they should have lost <laughs> that's it <laughs> they weren't ro like like um, it wasn't a robbery but in my mind Francis at least deserved a draw it wasn't a robbery with Tommy Fury it wasn't a robbery but in my it, the way that I saw it, that looked like a draw to me as well, at least. And I wasn't even mad at KSI's um, approach to the fight. I know like a lot of people were making memes out of it and it was funny. But I funny. thought his, 
I thought his style of fighting was just about right. Stay wide out of range. Because obviously Ty, um, Tommy's a boxer. If you're in range, he's gonna just he's gonna punch your head off or jab your head off. Let's stay at a distance. And then when I see an opening, let me just dive in with a sp yeah, bam, and then hold him. And then let me try and get out of range again. Tactics. And then try, yeah, it's tactics. I weren't mad at that at all. But anyway, um, shout out KSI though. Shout out to KSI. Because even after the fight, yeah, sometimes some people are like, oh, you should be like. I don't know. You should show a little bit more. Is it respect in the in in the loss? Okay. See how mad he went. I like that. Yeah. So do I. I like that. Yeah. So do it I. It shows that he cares. Anyone that thinks he's just doing it for a check or anyone that thinks he doesn't have no love for boxing, you can't watch that response to losing a fight and think it's anything else other than a man that loves to win. Whether it be something on YouTube or it be something in the boxing ring, and he's taking it very seriously. He didn't get knocked out. He took him all the way to the end. This guy's a professional boxer and a professional. Anyway, I was kidding to myself because he's a strong guy. But you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I just 100%. think. 100 percent And that's I the thing. I love the fact that you were that passionate. I like to see passion, bro. I love that, passion. That's the thing that could maybe later on make him be really, really good at the sport. If you look at um, uh, Floyd Mayweather, he mm. lost in a competition. And when they spoke to him in that competition when he was young, bro, he was bawling, bro. He couldn't even talk. Serious. He just walked off. Like he was trying to talk, he couldn't talk, he was really emotional and he just left. Bro, the man come back and didn't lose again. I hear that. Do you get what I'm I saying? He did I, not lose again. I respect that, you know, I respect that. Make a little so You need that, sometimes you need that. KSI, man, to me, you didn't lose anyway. I got my own rules. Yeah, right. KSI then. didn't lose, Francis didn't lose. That's for me though. Yeah, same. Um, Dizzy and Wiley. Dizzy and Wiley. Thoughts. You know what? Go on, go on, when I saw the tweet, yeah, of someone saying that them two was together, I thought it was Cap. And I nearly re I nearly retweeted it, but you know what I don't like to do? I don't like retweeting Cap. Hmm. So I just ignored it until I see um, Target say it. say it. And I was like, oh shit, swear. And then I wanted to see the video. Because I didn't believe it still. Still, there was still something in my mind that didn't believe it. I think maybe because in my mind, I, <clears throat> I, probably, I probably built it up to it being more than what it actually was anyway. Because I think at first when I heard that they was on stage together, I was like, what they did, what they were barring and that. And then I was a bit, I got annoyed <laughs> because in my mind. Because I'm saying what, them was on stage like barring in Dubai. Dubai don't deserve that. I'm sorry. They don't deserve that. Them two, see, you see them two on stage together in Dubai. That's the last place I want to see them two together. But then I realised it wasn't that, that it was just my man was on stage or whatever and they just embracing each other and whatnot. And it warmed my heart. It warmed my heart. I have views. Go, go for it. It stank. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad it happened. Of course I'm glad it go. happened. I'm vexed that Target said, oh, they met in my bedroom. Big man, that's not a moment for you to make it about you, Target, all right? <laughs> and on top of that, Target, like, that's hardly the video you go, oh my God, they met in my bedroom. Like, that video stank. Like, Wiley, I don't feel like he was meant to go on stage. I think that you and Dizzy Rascal had made up and then you just thought, you know, I'm going to run on stage. Right. <laughs> and that's all cool. But I'm just I like... I didn't, do you know what? Go on, sorry. For, a, for the two guys, and it's crazy because we spoke about it here on the pod. I want to say, I want to say about six years ago. I want to say about six years ago, five, six years ago. And then me and Dizzy had some words in the, in the DMs off the back of the subject of me saying, I hope they reconcile one day. Okay. But if I knew they were going to reconcile like this, I would have agreed with Dizzy when he was vexing me. Yeah, I hear that. On stage in Dubai. And then it's meant to be sidewind. It's meant to be Eskimo dance. It's meant to be something so monumental because these two to me, in Grime, Wiley and Dizzy. These are like, bro, I remember pressing the red button just to watch I Love You and thinking, oh my God, like he's on MTV. I remember watching Wiley bring Chip down to Westwood and I'm like, oh my God, Chip, you're with Wiley. Like the way I look at these guys is so high, irrespective of what they do in their life, whatever. To mm. me, these men are living legends, top dons. And you make up in Dubai on stage and you don't spit. It stinks. I hear it still. It you know, I didn't actually think about it's it. It's not like meant that. to happen like that. Yeah, yeah, no. It's not meant to happen like that. Target, why don't you bring it to your bedroom so I can do a set or something? So you just, oh, gassed about it, mate, in your bedroom. Oh. 
for me the whole thing just but I'm but on a, on a I, I'm side. happy that they obviously they must have had a conversation and they spoke or whatever and they've they've had a reasoning. I was very happy about that. So on happy. a personal one. Um but so yeah, do you know what I didn't look at I didn't look at it like that. I think that is an interesting point still. With all due respect, it almost feels as though like from a spectacle, so we're taking away from the uh the the deep emotional aspect yeah, that yeah, they yeah. had, yeah? yeah. And now we're talking about the spectacle. Because we're we're happy as fans, we're happy that they had a conversation of course. and they've did whatever. Yeah. But from a spectacle, what really is supposed to happen is, bro, don't go on the stage, stand at the side, and when the moment is right, when the moment is right, the world can see it. And whoever knows knows. So this is but why it's for. Yeah, Wiley just Wiley ruined the moment. Wiley shot a ball, man. Why did, you, why did you ruin it, brother? Just because you dyed your beard, you want everyone to see that it's black. <laughs> Wiley, this is all your fault. It could have been so special. Because it could have been a situation where people go, I swear I see them talking, and but you don't even know what the conversation's about. Right, that's it. Yeah, that's one oh, of them. I see them together, but yeah. it, it still might not be cool. It might just have been like, well, go on and keep it moving. Like, yeah. back in the day at O2. Yeah. Remember when Wiley saw Dizzy and they held each other from a distance? Yeah. And I remember that. It might have been something like that. And then it gets confirmed when you see it on stage somewhere in East London. Yeah. That oh would have been God. great. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, bring yeah. it back to where it's me meant to be. But just to know it's in the same place that half of the people in this country move to when they don't know what the fuck they're going to do with their lives makes me sick. <laughs> the place of no culture. The place of no soul. The place that has a Caribbean restaurant for no reason. The place that doesn't like to say hello, but they do buys. Why would you go there? They do Why? Buys. It could have been so special, but this was is it, me. Was it a headline show? Was it a dizzy headline show or was it a festival? It could have been a footline show, an armline show. I don't care. Because it, really? evil. it stinks even more so if it's just a... Normal thing. Yeah, it's just a normal festival. Uh, uh, oh, mate. But you know what? I'm sorry. I'm going to say sorry to both of them because you know what? Pleasing me is a hard task. I can appreciate that you lot had a real deep beef and the way you make up, it's not really got nothing to do with me. Who gives a damn? You lot yeah. are happy. You're talking and I'm happy for that. But guess what? I'm still not happy at the way it was presented to me. I like better yeah. presentation. presentation. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I'm an aesthetics man. <laughs> and I'm, I'm glad the way Dizzy came up to me like, get off my stage. I'm glad Dizzy done that. Yeah. Because I feel like Dizzy was like, we didn't have to do it like this. Yeah, we didn't have to do it like You've this. You've ruined it. And also, yeah, like we're cool, but let's, you know what I mean? Let's ease into it a yeah, little bit differently. <laughs> and, but it was nice to see Dizzy put it on his gram and all yeah, of that. Yeah, they both did, I think. And like, like, yeah, I'm happy for the both of them because that does mean a lot. That does mean a lot that they sat down and, well, whatever, whatever dynamic and had a conversation and now they're there. This What's what this I will here? say. Can I say oh, one thing? Um, so it was a Dizzy show. It was a Dizzy show, yeah. Can yeah. I say one thing to be cheeky? This is me just throwing some speculation out there. I'm not trying to say it's any one thing. But do you find it interesting that they both they, they, they both like found the time to do this at a point where it's not rosy on either side? If that makes any sense. What, so musically rosy? Everything rosy, like... I know Dizzy had some problems. They both had his... discrepancies as of recent in the past that has meant that maybe they're not the same figures that they once were. Yeah, because Dizzy had a situation with, I think, is it the mother of his ch children or child or something like that? But Wiley hasn't had anything for a minute. <laughs> but the one thing he has had means that even listening to Spotify is a difficult task. Try listen to Oh, yeah, that's true. Go, go to Spotify and try and find that sketch on Wiley Tune. One of my favourite songs of all time. <laughs> no, go try and find it. I dare you. It's Shadow Ban. I dare you. me on Twitter. But Shadow Ban. <laughs> shadow crazy. Ban. But do you know what? Like I said. Now, do you know what I think more, more than anything? I don't think it's because of that. I just think they're just older now. Yeah, 100%. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. almost like yeah, you're right. it's the politer version of when, um, well, it's like synonymous to like road men, for example. You know, you get to a, a, a position now where it's like, you get a little bit older, no one really wants to die. Like certain things are, it was deep at the time, but you've got kids now, circumstances change. There's bare things in it. Yeah. And it's like, we don't have to be friends though. We, yeah, we don't have, we to, don't be have to be friends. But we can, you know what, boom, you know what I mean? I acknowledge the time that we had as well and also i'm happy that you're alive and you're okay and you know what i mean and if the if the the time presents itself we touch stage together again at some point that's nice if and they that's touch cool. and do a set i'm gonna lose my, i'm lose my head oh my god I, do you know what head. as well i beg it be like like do an area nightclub thing or something I mean, yeah east london east get, london get back to east man yeah, get to they east, deserve, london. east have get done east. so much for music to me, East London has done so much. We say much Stratford music. Rex, open up Stratford Rex. That's oh, gone though, isn't it? Oh my god, that's, that's a new that's build. Sold out. That's sold out. 
That's Hold a new up. build. It's a new build, isn't it? Is it a new build? Probably. Knock it down, man. Make a new build. Make well, a make a new build. <laughs> Wait, well, let me see. Stratford. Rep. I'll make a... Just something. Stratford. Charge people £100. I'm still paying. I'm still paying. Rex. Like yeah, from you, no cause you know what? Yeah, it, you know what's so mad to me? Gigs and uh, Diddy got a concert next week. Yeah, that's mad to me. Oh, like, that's my, like my honorable shoutouts, by the way. That, like that is, cr- I, that's crazy to me. One person I've grown up watching with Bad Boy Records, thinking, my lord, one day hopefully I can have, I don't know, one tenth of the success you have. And then Gigs to me, it's just one of the most incredible voices in London that we've ever had. Together on a stage in Shepherd's Bush. Incredible, bro. But to me, this is bigger. Wiley Dizzy, to me, as a grind Oh, man, yeah, yeah, definitely. It is oh, 100%. much bigger. So what I'm saying is the Wiley Dizzy show will be much appreciated. I'll pay my money. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Do, well, just do an Eskimo dance. Do an Eskimo dance. That's gone, you know. Do an Eskimo, Eskimo dance. dance. And we know we got... And make sure you bring Flo Dan. Because he oh, bodied little Flo baby. Dan, 100%. He bodied little baby. Yeah, it's a bit. It's a bit. Oh, man. But you know what? Let's just go there very quickly as well, though. Honourable shout out to Giggs and Diddy, though. I yes. do... Their their friendship or what they've built into a friendship just looks so it looks it looks sick to be honest with you. Cold. Like and it seems like what Giggs is experiencing off the back of that. And I do you know what it is? I think one of the reasons why people gravitate to Giggs so much is because he is authentic. Yes. You get what I'm saying? And I think over there, they certain people gravitate to that. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? When they are what they say that they are. You know what I mean? And like, yeah, it looks like Giggs is experiencing a whole load of stuff over there. But at the same time, it's like when they come over here, they're experiencing like our culture differently through Giggs. Whereas, you know, like usually they might, they might have come here and, you know, they, you might only see them in a certain club or a certain restaurant or whatever. Giggs is taking them to certain places and doing certain things with them. Do you get what I'm saying? 100%. And I just think it's just like, it shows you how close those dots have been connected. The same thing that you you mentioned before, when I was a youth, a lot of the stars that we looked at were people from across the pond, you know what I mean? And Diddy was definitely one of them. Uh, Bearing in mind, he was a businessman more than anything, but you'd see him at the forefront doing things or whatever, and he was just super active. And then obviously making music and whatnot. And then over here though, you know, when we had our the rap shit going off and then we had a, a light early golden era, like Giggs was at the like forefront of that too. So to see those two together, connecting that way and then now doing a show together, yeah, it's mad. I missed out on tickets though, bro. No, you never. Don't worry, I got you. Black King Guards. Uh, yeah, no, but do you know what? I, do you know what? Because <laughs> you know I didn't love that, innit? No, I love it now. Do you? Look what it's becoming. Yeah, but I but look listen, what is becoming. But hear what I'm saying. And he sent me the message. I played it to you. Yeah, I hear it still. Black but King and I was. understand that. But remember, I told you, yeah, yeah, what Giggs had said to you in the thing. Had he have put that in the beginning? Yeah, okay. What? Mad. In the song. Mad, 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 mad. mad. Oh my god. Mad, mad. And the thing is, I rate Diddy's. Of course, I rate Diddy's thing. I rate Diddy's intros and outros. He has got some historical ones. Yeah, some classic ones. It was just that one there. This didn't. It didn't touch home. Like right, that. for me. He should have But listened. that doesn't take away from the fact that Diddy's not, not a Don. Of course he's a Don. Complete Don. He should have just listened to the speech on Hate Me Now with what? Nas. All right. The way he spoke on that track. Yeah. Oh. I started yeah, feeling classic. like I was a crazy guy. These times I'm a little kid in school getting robbed and my cousin's coming to get the <laughs> money back. That, oh, man, it's nice, nah, bro. classic, man. But yeah, I just think... I big them up still. That's so, it's nice to see all these collaborations. It's nice to see people just like, you know, forgetting the, the wrongs of yesterday and finding a way to move forward even if you don't have to be friends, just to have that sort of amicable respect for each other. It's nice. And I'm also, it is nice to see gigs having this sort of key to the city because one thing I listen to, one th- in the States, for example, I always look for like roles people play. Yeah. And there's one person who are always here, and I could be wrong, who's like always like mending relationships and trying to sort things out. Mm. And it's Snoop Dogg. Yeah. I always hear, yeah, Uncle Snoop done this, Uncle Snoop done that. And in this country, so therefore, like, the person that I feel like has a lot of respect within that scene is Snoop. He can make things happen. Yeah. I feel that way about Giggs. When I talk about, when I hear, like, Diggity, he'd be like, yeah, Giggs talks to me. Or I can say Giggs, like, will say a couple words if he sees something great about me. It's not even just us. There's so much people I hear say, yeah, man, Giggs shouted me out to say this and that. And just to know that's the man that's getting, you know, Diddy to come over. And fam, Giggs deserves that. He's the man that's just 
really trying to make this a really credible scene and he's doing everything in his power. He'll jump on collaborations with new rappers and mm. nah, gigs is uh, And I also incredible. love the fact that there's money being made in that too. Yeah, I think that is, that's important because, you know, like back in the day when the infrastructure was different, like people were cutting through and being authentic and being themselves, but there just wasn't money to be made like that. So when, as history has gone on and things have gone on, history has gone on, as things have gone on and that has become history, yeah. sometimes we almost forget about those people. And if they, we, if we do forget about them, sometimes those people never got a financial benefit in it because the infrastructure wasn't the way that it was. I like the fact that now the infrastructure is the way that it is so that somebody like that can be financially rewarded in their authenticity. 100%. And do you know what I like as well? Because I remember watching old gigs videos. Do you know who's always there? Buck. Right there. And guess who's still there? Buck! That feels right, man. That yeah. feels... I just... That to me... Just being a man from the UK and Giggs is Jamaican as well. This just feels right, man. Happy birthday to his son the other day as well. Oh, man. yeah, his um, son. His son's got a mixtape out. His, his son's name's called ML, right? Come on, man. Just check that quickly. Um, Double check, make sure we're correct. Again, I watched the... I watched the um, see me, yeah? <laughs> this is the thing. Some people will not see this, yeah? Especially like certain artists that know me or have like a relationship with me. or They might not realise how much I watch them. And even like... I might critique certain things and it might sometimes come across that I don't because I remember there was like a couple people was mentioning the fact that you know I kept mentioning I wasn't loving the way that Dave was doing what he was doing with gigs and I wanted gigs to make sure that he doesn't do that again Yeah. and sometimes that can be taken a certain way like I'm people just take it whatever way but irrespective of whether I like something or I don't like something here I rate these a lot. And so I'm always watching. I'm just, I'm scanning them and paying so much attention to what they're doing. I watched the live between him and his son, yeah? Yeah, yeah ML his name is. He's got a mixtape out at the moment. Actually, I, I've only listened to a couple of songs of it, but I ain't listened to it properly. And it's like, you know, pushing music aside, what a proud thing. What Do you get you what mad? I'm saying? Like to be your, a dad and see his son now, like, because obviously his dad's done music. But now his son's doing music. He's got his own mixtape out. His son was in LA. Imagine that. Like, his son's in LA while they're doing the, the live or whatever. And it was just a sick little moment to see them interacting between each other. And him saying, yeah, nah, man, I love you, son. Like, well done. Like, Come you don't, on, you don't usually see the, that side from somebody like that. So, you know? And it's yeah, it's clobbering time. You know what? Clobbering time. What um, Marvel character is that again? The thing. Come on. And that is such a gigs thing as well. That is 100%. such his dad's thing. It's clobbering time. <laughs> Can we just say, people like Crips, people like gigs. They yeah. are eradicating the stereotype that lived and existed when I was young. Yeah, That's right. Jamaican men do look after their children. Right then. So please just get rid of that stereotype that you like to bring around for the look of love. We'll make a new one. Uh, I got Like one top one. Caucasian boxers will probably lose to Africans from Cameroon. Yeah. Exactly. Good Francis, 37 years old. Big. Are you? He's Francis younger than is Wiley, but. Rude boy. boy. He is what? He's definitely younger than Wiley. Um, a couple other just quickly um, honourable shout outs yeah honourable shout out to the GRM <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I'm saying he's rude he said Wiley and Logan Summers the same age what's wrong with you? what? I heard you say it <laughs> fam I don't know if it's on camera bro honourable shout out to um, the composers yeah they just did Royal Albert Hall and they have just announced Wembley Arena yeah, for They've October. They've been killing it for time, you know. They have been. They are so. so they are the. They are the real deal, bro. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. And again, they are what I would say. They are objectively good, and what I mean by that is, even if it's not your thing, even if it's not your thing, you will see these men and say, these men are cold and humble as for, bro. Humble as. Jesus Christ. You meet them now, they're still just like wild one and yeah, just yeah, normal. Yeah. And the thing is, I'm love the type of man pod, that- I'd huh? love to get, have them on the pod, actually. 100%. And, and I apologize, because sometimes I see them in person and I just can't remember what they look like. So sometimes I'll be like, yo, and I'm like, oh, I'm yeah, so yeah. sorry, my brother, because yeah. you're the composers. So I'm listening to what you compose. <laughs> yeah, Everything else, true. sometimes I'm not really, I still appreciate the art and appreciate who you are. So don't take it as a disrespect. Plus I wear glasses. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, that's, nah, you know, that does happen to me with them as well, to be fair. But and they are they are very very sick. If you ever have the opportunity to go and see them, wherever they're performing, go. They are they're so good. Bring a really good vibe. And, and if you want to see something they're doing right now, because if you're watching this and it's Sunday, 
you should head over to GRM. They've just done a little freestyle thing with Margs, who went mad. So the composers are in the background. You can catch Margs and the composers on GRM right after you've watched this. Well, that was my next honorable shout out. Honorable shout out to GRM for that this content that they're doing at the moment, yeah. Um, what is it called? Is it called something? Go go to GRM, please. Do you know what it is? Everyone tries to do it's this It's elegant content. rap. Everyone tries to make content like this, yeah. But the way GRM have sort of like branded it, the way it looks, is that GRM Radio? GRM Radio, that's it. It just looks cold. There's a studio audience. What was the first one? The first one wasn't Rimsy, was it? It was. No. Nah. Was it Young, Young nah. Tef? Was it Young Tef? You like, should... I feel like he was. It might not have been the first one that they recorded. But it no, was wait, cold though. It wasn't Young Tef, man. Was it? So, you sure? Let's find out. No, it was Blade. There it was. Blade, there, Blade, was Blade, 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 Blade. Yeah, it was Blade. Um, yeah, like composers playing in the background, elegant rap. Like, uh yeah, it's just. Gro it's like, it's, it's perfect for where we're at at the moment now. Do you get what I'm saying? If you would have done this maybe like eight years ago. I don't know if it would have felt right. But now? It just feels right. Because composers have a name. GRM have a name. And every artist they bring has a name. So it's not like anyone else is like, who's that, who's that? You know them all. Yeah. And there's a studio audience. And although you say elegant rap, I hear you. Mark's done his Westwood freestyle. I know. Big man, that is so far from elegant, it's crazy. I know. It's aggressive. And just to have a live band behind that. Nah, bro. But it's, uh, it's elegant aggressive. Elegant aggressive. <laughs> It's elegant, aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, nah, man. It actually re it gives me the vibe of a light vibe of Rick Ross and Justice League, with I that kind you. of thing in the background. With them, you understand what I'm saying? The instrumentation with the rap, like, yeah, it's cold. Do you know what I started thinking when I saw it? And I thought, I wonder how far they can go with it because I end up just like watching it and I'm like, this is crazy. I used to love MTV Unplugged. Mm. So I like the way this is framed. I like the way this is done, but is there a way that we can incorporate the audience so it has more of an intimate feel where it's like, I remember one of the best Unplugged for me is Kanye West and Lauren Hill's one is crazy as well. That's oh, crazy. But look, but like they just start telling stories about certain songs. And um, I like that. There's like one song that Kanye West had his album, had his album called Spaceship. I've been working these slave mm. shifts and I and he speaks about the stories of why he had some of the quotes in there and it was some, a lot of them were his uncle's quotes so just like that type of information that you get from songs would be so so sick especially when you're using artists like Blade and Margs where they're so far away from the time when they released some of the songs maybe throughout that could we hear some of the stories and what was happening around the time when you made that song or maybe I'm asking for too much I, no I you're not do. no you're not I think yeah. that I think that is a sick thing to incorporate actually because God. you know for them more time the tunes that they are performing mean something mark's doing that yeah to, to some people it just looks like he's just barring and he's just getting some things off nah there's actually a story behind that that west that whole westward freeze though and him just lightly talking about it and then doing it i think is cold or him doing it and then talking about it that's one of the reasons why you know with the checkup like one of the things that i want to do is i want to go through some classic albums too so I would love to, for example, sit down with Kano and discuss Home Sweet Home. Now oh he's a big man. Please. But I also play the please. songs back. So he plays songs, verses, all of these type of things and just get like his perspective now from where he's at now. Do you get you me? Get, gets and do freedom of speech. Gets oh, absolutely. 100%. It may 100%. not be his best project. His best project at, at, like before then around then was No, I would definitely do that. His best I even want to do yes. honestly. I want to do Miss Dynamite. Miss Dynamite. Deeper. I even want to do Craig David Bourne to do it. I'm sorry. I want to do that. But I want to sit down with him. All right. All right. No, I'm not gonna say nothing. I've yeah, got to learn just, to not be cheeky. Right. Exactly. And be sweet. Right. Craig David's a legend. Just leave it as that. Leave it as that. Um. He can't wear a jeans jacket. That's all I'm asking. <laughs> uh, Merkston 38 special. Don't know if you heard that. I didn't listen it's too to easy it, for him. On, it's just too easy for him. It's too easy for Merkston. Yeah. He I wish just... Merkston was more consistent. We were just saying. I wish Merkston was more consistent because you know what? He becomes one of them individuals that if you are from a distance and you maybe don't understand how it actually works, you go, he's underrated. You go, he's not appreciated the way he should. And you, you say loads of other things. But I just think Merkston's so comfortable in life and this is something he loves to do. He just, he, you know, he attaches it and approaches it when he likes, which is cool. But bro, you're actually good. Do you know what? I, I politely disagree. Is it? Yeah, because 
So he put out an album, I put out a project, what was it, 2021, that was top tier. That was one of my favorite. Top tier was crazy. Wait, when did that actually come out? Was that the set? Was that with the one with Geordie on it? Geordie and Pepper on that project, isn't it? It's in January. T's and oh, T's. January. No, then you're right then, that class is my thing. Oh, is it? Because I was going to say, I thought that came out in 2021. I don't when know did it why. Come out? Huh? When did it come out? It tw- uh, 2020. So that came out just before COVID. Oh, so am I right? You are right. Jesus you are 100%. Christ. But if this came out, which it didn't, but if it came out in 2021, which I thought it did, mm-hmm. in this time, he's also put out um, freestyle packages as well. So he's like, he's still been doing bits. There's still things. Yeah, but you're Merkston, bro. You're, I hear you're coming but from, I know but those, you're those, those, those freestyle packages are, is something that he's always done. So he's always done... You know the little the mixtapes where he's like the going the over the, the yeah yeah yeah. So he's done them. He's done them. He's all it is is he's due a he's due a project now. That's it. He's due. Top tier is crazy. Like, top tier is crazy, hard, bro. I don't know what it is then. Maybe it is a bit of what I'm saying, but it's also ah, it's what we were saying. It is. It is. It is a bit of like it's the packaging. Maybe packaging is important to me because do you know what it is? Unfortunately, today, yeah. And maybe we're, we're approaching a space in this country, maybe like the millennials in, in, in the US, when people really did care about their products and their brand and the way they were presented a lot more. And I think there was a lot way, it was a lot easier for you to present someone like Jay Kwan yeah. um, and make him big purely because there was like a formula and what you could use to make an artist bigger. And I'm like, Merkston, you're just relying on the fact that you're sick at spitting, you're good relations. What more could you do? What more could you do? Because you're actually cold. So what more could you do? I've yeah. I mean, look, with Merkston, maybe it's just finding ways of like broadening his uh, his fan base. But even then, I don't know, bro. Because look, this project came out 2020. Yeah. Then he had, I know we did have COVID, so that collapsed the whole thing. Yeah. But still, you could still make music. To be fair. Of course. But then he had the um, that project seven that when- came out this year. Oh, so he's had a project in 2020 and his next project is 2024. Three. So he had one this year. June. Oh, it's 2023, sorry. So, yeah. so it's three years. Then he's put th- another song out and then he's probably going to drop So it's, three, so it's so not too bad. Not too bad. Two projects in three years. Yeah, but that's not bad. That's not good, Chucky. We're in a whole nother era. Maybe in 1996 when Usher was doing Can You Get With It, that was nice. Or My Way, when he was doing them. Maybe we could have it then. But in 2023, my brother is, is evolve or get lost, get lost, get left behind. You're far too good to be pretending you're releasing music in 2005. I'm not, I'm not with, me, I'm not with it. <laughs> you're too sick. Consistency. And well, if you're gonna take that long, one. just give me like five videos. Am I missing something? I feel like I'm missing something though. Maybe you are. Maybe my point's I'm not I'm sure there was something else. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. But I think as a Merkston fan and as me listening to Merkston, I feel like right now, now is the time that I'm looking for something for Merkston. Whereas before I couldn't say that I was like, I was thirsty. That might not be the right word, but I wasn't like, you know what I'm saying? There was just, for me, there was enough music for me to listen to. But now I'm like, okay, it feels like now is the right time for him to drop something for me. Um... Two more, just very quickly, yeah. There is a an artist called Quellum. Am I saying his name right? Quellum. Quellum. He's got a project called Mellow. Hard, bro. Is it? Hard. Have you heard it? Yes. Hard, bro. Let me see. Hard. Quellum. Like Quellum. Yeah, yeah. It, do you know what it feels? It feels... It feels right. It feels black, British, though, like, and... It's hard, bro. Serious. It's it's very very. It's really impressive. He's got like a little skit from from Skepta on there, which I think he's like taken from an interview. He's got Sloan on there, um, and he's just got like he. There's a flip of Gash by the Hour on there. Hear that? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. It's Is good. It? Yeah, it's really good, bro. It's really really good. Really good project. Jim Legacy. What. A- hero he is I saw someone do a remake of Soldier Boy's Crank that what I swear it's crazy <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's, it's violence is it it's cold someone from here or abroad yes. is it yeah I can't remember but someone will leave a comment they will let us know it mm. is crazy I heard this you going crazy yeah okay now I'm on that yeah let me know I like that go back in time find out what was this is what Puff Daddy was doing that's how he got big bro bear samples 
all right, let's talk. So Lil Yachty and J. Cole had a conversation. And when? the conversation was based upon competitiveness in rap. And I think it was sort of started like now this. Now looking at it from a standpoint, oh, I, mean, I think Joe Budden with First Person Shooter, it felt like there was already a personal vendetta towards Drake, which made it a thing to where it was like, oh, Drake got washed Oh, Drake may not be that guy. Not looking at it from a standpoint of me. I think what, uh, personally, I think what his first contributed to that song made it, made it the song it is. It mm-hmm. gave it the energy. Mm-hmm. And I also hate how people think like, uh, like if like if Cole and Drake get on a song together, it's like they gotta be trying to like out rap each other. And shit. Like, I understand what you're saying. Mm-hmm. In that moment, he chose the song over the competition and what they gonna say. Boom, boom, boom. Drake ain't looking at it like. I'm going to take Cole fucking head off at yeah. some point. Don't think he's not looking at it like, nah, we just going to make the bet. Nah, he come from that cloth. Yeah. So That's so true. he, at some point in time, he going to want his lick back. Joe so basically, what this, what they're getting at in that conversation is, is that Yoti is alluding to the fact that like, sometimes rappers just go into the booth and they just want to make a good song. Yeah. And like, it shouldn't have to be really about the competitive nature. Whereas Cole obviously still comes from that cloth of now, nah, but sometimes when we're in the studio, man do wanna lit like in this one, in this particular song that them two did together, Drake might have just been thinking about the song. Cole wasn't thinking about the song. He was thinking about just doing a madness. But he's like, don't ever get it twisted. Drake is gonna wanna have a lick back at some point. There's gonna be a time where we're gonna mm-hmm. jump on a song together and we're gonna ha- wanna have a lick back. And I think the wider conversation on that is, has the competitive spirit in amongst rap music, amongst young people been completely lost? No, no. I think when I was growing up, a lot of the competitive rap was from New York. And New York had hip hop in a headlock. But it was only a matter of time, just because of numbers, that if another area has a different approach to hip hop and rap, and doesn't have a competitive nature, ATL, then all of a sudden, and that becomes the place for hip hop, that becomes the new versions of shit people be looking at when they grow up. So then it loses that competitive edge purely because there isn't, I don't remember loads of people beefing like that in Atlanta. I remember flipping Outkast coming on stage at the Saucer Wars in like 95 saying like, well, you ain't got no love for down south and all of that. Whereas like in New York, bro, like it's just battle rap. Like people want to be like, everyone's worrying about bars. Like I have to be better than you. It's the equivalent is in this country, I would say, is grime. In grime, the reason why I liked it is because I have to be better than you. Mm. I have to be better than me when I was yesterday. Mm. You go to radio, what? I didn't get a wheeler. Next week, I'm getting a wheeler. Now, everyone's friends. Honestly, personally, from the bottom of my heart, maybe because I haven't eaten, and it's what God knows what time, it makes me sick, Chucky. It makes me proper, 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 proper sick because Oh, so you do believe that this competitive nature has gone? Of course. Oh, because you said no. So I thought that you said meant... No, no, the competitive nature has not gone completely in front of... I just think because... because It's not not that it's gone... Sorry, how do I describe this? There's a bigger area of people that don't want to do it. So Atlanta's just got more people that are not on that. And New York's smaller. Mm. And I just think in New York, if New York was Atlanta, then we'd have that competitive edge. But because it was like New York was running the scene and they don't run it no more, we just got to follow suit to Atlanta. And I like Atlanta. It's all about vibes and don't, you know, don't stay loyal to your woman and I'm with it. Strip clubs and all of that. But that competitive, like, Griselda rap, I have to go and listen to, like, West Side Gun and hear some guy that I really, I want to rap, bro. Conway the Machine. You think he's not jumping on the song and wants to bite someone's head off. Like, you don't get that so much because it's like, people just want to do little yachty rap and I'm, and I'm, it's cool, it's nice, isn't it? It's inclusive. Everyone makes more money. It's inclusive. But, bro, <laughs> personally, I just think it's too soft. Like it's way too Do you know like, what? I'm not even I wouldn't rubbish. even be mad at that little yachty type rap being competitive if it was competitive. It's but I don't not. think it is competitive. I think that the the competitive nature is there. I just don't think it is in the art form. I think that the competitive nature now is more based upon who sells what more than anything, mm-hmm. uh, who's wearing what, and maybe what the man them's doing, or maybe who's chopping it's like everything outside of the actual art. So there's competitiveness. 
they're looking at each other in a competitive way, mm. but they're not going in the studio and being competitive amongst each other. Because they're we, not trying to yeah. out. I think, do you know yeah. what? Joe Biden actually said something that I really, really agreed with. He said, I can't remember exactly how he said it, but he was like, everyone is just trying to sound like the guy that they like. Yeah, he's right. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, no one's trying to innovate. Like, no one's trying to be them and just be the sickest version of them. They just, I like you and I just want to be you. And so they're happy being them and being in a group of people being another guy but it's just being it's just like their competitive nature is not about the art it's just about right you know what like i got these trainers or whatever sneakers from so and so you can't get them i got this you can't get that i got this gal you can't get that i went over here i went to dubai i drove this car like th there's this competitive nature within that this is all because of instagram yeah. and tiktok and whatever but in terms of the actual art and the skill that shit ain't even there like that shit is so far gone and I think it's a shame for me that sometimes artists do go in and just think, oh, do you know what? We just want to make a nice song. No, some artists do come in and think I want to let that guy know I still want to kill him. So there is that. But I like, but bro, that. do you know what it is? That is, I like that. I like the thing of, <laughs> you know what? Yeah, maybe not I'm going to kill you, but I'm just going to lightly let you know that I'm not dim. No, but that's what I'm trying to say to you. Like, Man, yeah, rap, now that you're saying it. I you think that you're going to come in this studio and you're going to do a man thing and I'm not going to, like, I just likely need you to know that I'm not dim. Yeah, because street rap, for example, I think the, the, the thinking, I'm not, I'm not a street rapper, so I don't know, but street rap, the thinking is, yo, I need to show I'm the realist. I need to let people know what I'm about. It's about respect and so on and so forth. Whereas, like, that sort of Jay-Z, Joel Santana, Cameron, Jadakus, like, Styles P, them guys used to push each other, like, no, 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 my pen's better than yours. No, my pen's better than yours. And it was... That type of competitive edge is what I feel means that Jadakus can go do a versus today and it slaps. Mm. And I start looking at these artists today and I'm like, in 20 years time, can any of you not do a versus if it still exists? In 20 years time, I'm playing any of these damn records that I'm hearing right now. Because that whole first person shooter, brother, no one can't tell me Drake don't sound like Nardo Wick at the end of it. You couldn't convince me he don't. Mm. He sounds exactly like Nardo Wick at the end of the song. So then why would you use first person shooter at the time where it's you and J. Cole? For you to go and sound like some 20 year old real mad rapper that's like wants to kill everyone. Like, why are you doing that? You're Drake. J. Cole's <laughs> just giving you the dopest verse ever. He's then said, like, who is it out there? Who's like the best rappers out of the three? Is it me, K Dot, or Drake? And then you pretend to be Nardo Wick. Like, what the fuck am I listening to? I heard that and I was just like, when it goes to that sort of, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, turn it off, man. That's not why I like Drake. That's not why I listen to Drake. That's not my version of Drake I like. I like Drake when Drake's Drake. Mm. Irrespective of how people might call him emotional, this, that, and the other. I just like when Drake's Drake. When I'm hearing Nardo Wick, I'm like, I'll go to Nardo Wick if I want to hear that. I don't want to <laughs> hear that from Drizzy Drake, bro. Mm. So personally for me, it is disappointing that Joe Budden's point might have some truth in it. Uh, a lot of truth in it. And the competitive edge out of rap and so on and so forth is gone just so people can be more inclusive. I think it's a bit trash. Bro, well, I think the the pushing each other thing is i think it's just unfortunate that it's it doesn't feel like they're doing that at the moment and i think for me wait that would, is you say that's one. A, would you say that's across the board would you say that the states the uk or both i think it's both Jeez. i think it's here as well yeah we got a crop of we still got a crop of people here that are like trying to push each other and whatever else and i'm sure that it's still in america naturally of course you would still have a crop over there too but generally i just think that people pay a lot more attention to, in my opinion, just the wrong things. You can't be, in my mind, you can't be a skilled rapper, but the most important thing that you are competitive about is you wearing this and that other person not having that. Is it also- That's weird. Or this one sold X, Y, and Z. I hate, but let me tell you something, mm, yeah. I hate you You see that, <laughs> that part there? Sometimes those come, the, the who sold what comes up depending on the context of a conversation. But it's never usually a driving force of my arguments for an artist. You know, like, the only reason why I might ever talk about uh, someone selling something or selling a certain amount might only be because I have a connection to people behind the scenes. Yeah. Let's just say a manager of an artist. So I know for them, even though I know that this, this manager 
legacy is very important for that person. But I also know from a business aspect, whatever things ticking over, I know for them, the numbers are really important. So if I've got a, if say you manage someone, I might be looking at those type of things because I know for you, that's going to mean something to you. Mm. But if I don't, if I don't have that connect, bro, I couldn't give a, f like I a couldn't monkey, give bro. a monkey yeah, about, hey. is it good? Is it good? Were they pushing themselves? Were they pushing each, when, when they was with somebody else, were they pushing each other? Did they create something different? Did they, is there, is it making me feel something? Mm. And then, and then on top of that, the sickest thing is, is later on down the line, when I look back on the project, it's like, can I look back at this project with an emotional connection? Can I say, oh yeah, like I remember listening to Mellow, for example, and yeah, it was sick. Them times there, and I was doing R&B and slow jams. I was recording thing with poet and whatnot, and yeah, warm, I was yeah, driving. He... Like that's the coldest thing. Not what who sold this and that. Like so, when rappers and whoever else are doing all of that type of shit, and this is where your competitive spirit lies, it's a fail to me. So then, what does that mean for music going forward? Because even now, as you're speaking, I'm thinking, Paul, like. If we're saying that, Paul, why did you even like rap at the start? Like, what brought you in? It was the competitive edge. It's the like essence. Saying, the essence of it. So if you lose the essence, what have you got? To a certain extent, I feel like, and I'm going back to that Nardo Wick song with, uh, Nardo Wick song. First person shooter, Drake and J. Cole. Do you know what it sounds like? It sounds like a business move. If you imp if like, if you deploy or you, you attach a, a younger sound to, because obviously J. Cole's like 37, Drake's like 37. If we have, if we, get a younger mechanic to the song where in which uh, a 21 a 20 year old can hear it and go ha ah, i recognize that type of cadence and and flow and beat structure and so on and so forth we might get more listenership so i think the business is compromising the music a lot because the principles of what to be a good rapper shouldn't change but i imagine the business every four or five years will change all the time and if you're taking a look at taylor swift i think she reportedly get like 1.5 million in the first week or what? But some stupid. Of course, number. she's gonna do that. She's. But like, if that's what it is to be, if that's what you have to do to get loads of numbers in a week, I don't think rappers should aspire to get loads of numbers in a week because it's almost like a different journey you got to take to get those numbers. It seems like what you should be aspiring to do is taking a look at what the principles. I shouldn't tell you what you should do. What would be nice is you look at the principles to be a good rapper and you ask yourself who's the best example of that right now and see what numbers they're getting and then you go, all right, cool. How can we excel that? Because at least the principles are still staying within it if you've got joe budden talking about certain rappers sounding like their favorite artists like that was not this thing back in the day even in grime we took it from hip-hop if you sounded like someone i remember when people said to gets you sound like kano i think that was probably i think he was offended to a certain extent not because he thinks kano's rubbish but it's like bro i'm me yes exactly i rate kano and i rate kano for rating kano but i want you to rate gets for rating gets mm. you don't say the same thing today obviously but at one point you know, the comparison was made so Oh, I think no, I think with with the Tyler Swift thing though, is that in her field she probably did use the principles of what was going on in that in that genre yeah. and where she came from, and she like was good at what she did and maximized that, and now she is where she's at. Hundred. Whereas like some people will look at where she's at now yeah. and think, oh, I need to just be there now without looking at. The fact the that this person yeah. used the principles from here. Yeah. But you know what I will say is, yeah, is that like the, ess the essence will never die. Mm. It just means that sometimes it just needs to take a little, go for a little full circle thing. So yeah. the noise might not be that, but there will still always be a crop. And that's mm. why I think sometimes when people t uh, talk about uh, music being musically dead or whatever it never usually feels like that for me because i do always find the crop that tailors to me yeah yeah of course and, and then so i'll talk about them shout about them and just play my play that music very regularly so it might be dead if your ears is tailored to that then yeah. boy i feel sorry for you g I hear you. but I hear it's you. not dead for me because you know what i mean quailum's outside and i respect that and you know what i feel like if you look at music that you know deploy like if you look at music that has strong principles and you've started listening to music, say, since the year, I don't know, say 2001. It's probably got music before then that you'll like because they have principles that were probably there way before 2001. So there's actually a lot of music for you to listen to. Mm. Now, if you like a music that's like a new sound, so on and so forth, a bit more commercial, a bit more at the times, and you're getting bored, when you look back, there ain't much to look for. So I would say to people, that you know, attach yourself to, to genres of music that 
are involved in culture primarily because like I said, I love reggae music. So if reggae music comes out today, I can listen to reggae music from like 1980 something and it will still give me a similar strong feeling. And the same thing about rap. I love Conway the Machine. I can't lie. I watch most of his freestyles. Conway the Machine's freestyle on Funkmaster Flex is one of the best freestyles I've seen in my damn life, bro. It's the, the latest one he's done. It's ridiculous. So if I like that, I can just type in freestyles from all rappers and take a look at loads of freestyles that keep that same principle and I'm there forever. So, yeah, man, people, I don't know, man. I feel sorry for some. Yeah, some well, people if, some. yeah, no. Your competitive nature is that's where it is, then that's where it is, bro. But How do you bring it back if team. it's dying? Can you bring it back? Nah, it just, like, everything comes and goes, innit? And then comes again. So it's like, at some point, at some point, that essence bit, that we, that competitive thing is going to be a thing. It's going to be a thing. And it's going to push it, huh? Yes. You need a villain? Yeah, yeah, probably. Because it's not necessarily a villain, but it's someone that goes against the time. It's just a rebellious act. You need a rebellious guy to go, scrap this, man. Like, that's why I think everyone was happy while he's gone. Because Stormzy could be killing it, which he was. And then Wiley goes, nah, boom, I want to say this. And mm. all of a sudden, it creates a new atmosphere. Whereas right now, you've got no disruptors. And mm. that's what hip-hop was. It was a massive disruptor. I reckon music was doing this. Hip-hop came and then music was like, what the hell is this sound? Oh, we can ignore it for a little while. Mate, Jay-Z's getting big. Oh, we can ignore it for a little while. Next, you know, you've got Tupac and Biggie, big, big artists. Now you can't ignore it. Okay, cool. What's happening now, man? Yeah. Shifts, innit? Culture shifts, they happen all the time. Sometimes they happen in five years, 10 years, 15 years, but it will happen. And that's why I think it's always important to just try and be yourself because once mm. it shifts and you're there then you and you move with that shift, mm. it's nice. If you are not being yourself and you're just doing something to just fit in, once it does shift and your actual thing comes in, you got to die with that last thing. And now you got to watch everyone who was doing what was really you really excel now and you're there dying with people that you weren't even this is not even you just yeah so i would hate for that to happen to me by the way do you know what i would say chucks what we should do, <laughs> I would yeah, hate for that to happen to as me. My, I, listen i love so many artists in this country they've taught me so much from a distance that i owe them so much but they still have howlers yeah we've all got howlers everyone's seen kano's recent you know it's recent to oh, most people shit. but i'm saying to you i bet you kano never performs that song no but at the time the business would make him believe we'll give the context you have to, you can't do that now. Kano, you done a song called Rock and Roll and I hated <laughs> it at the time and people loved it. And I was like, Kano's not going to do this in 10 years. And Top Boy Kano, th that's not rock and roll. I was like, oh. Yeah, it was it's called Rock and Roll, isn't it? But like then people... <laughs> I'm not just going to put it down to him. Skepta had howlers. Oh, right. Then I'm glad you said that. I, I promise you, I promise you. A... Yeah, right, the then. girl from EastEnders. Exactly. He's never going to perform Kalidas. that now. He's never going to perform that now. Right then. So I'm just like, you take a look at people's catalogs. I reckon they will show you. There'll be, when you take a look at a man's catalog that he performs on stage, there'll mm -hmm. be something very similar from the first song to the last song. And I think it'll be principle led. Obviously, there'll be a couple of commercial songs you have to do because they're here to see it. But apart from that, I think the 90% of your set will be a, an accurate depiction of who you are. And all them little moments where you have to do something for money won't be there. Mm. So then I go, what is, what's the point of it in the first place then? Mm. I'm gonna just leave it alone. Keep the competitive edge. If your biggest songs are songs where you've got at someone, stay there. Yeah, well, we know that now, though. I mean, at the time for them, that's true. They they didn't know that this was a whole new thing. You get what I'm saying? And and again, the infrastructure was different. It wasn't. It felt as though the only way to make a young change was by doing something like this. The people were gravitating to it. It was just a thing in it. But you know, one of the reasons why this came up on, I was talking to Mimi about it and someone else. I think mm. it was just like a little thing on Twitter. But I was like, one of the reasons why I don't talk bad upon it is because I always believe that it was just something that happened almost for us to get to this space that we're at now. And now, you know what? It's there, we just leave it there. We have to. We just leave it there. We don't go back to it. We don't need to go back. But, but we want, maybe one, one, maybe one day they could, do you know what I'd love to see? Go on. All of them lot, all of the artists together that were making some of that foolishness. Review yeah. them songs. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Sit down and just review it amongst Howlers. themselves. You should all come here. And Who's we got go the worst one? <sighs> Who's got the worst one? I might make a list. I'm gonna should make we a do list. it? Should we make a list? Yeah, let's do it. Let's go through. For next the, week. Yeah, yeah. let's do it for next week, actually. Because you know what? I already started. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> we done it in the Viva group. We were like, oh, do you remember? Yeah. And we were going back and forth with songs. Because some people in the Viva group are a little bit younger. They're like, I didn't know Kano done this song. Their whole memory, of, when people say Kano, they always think their earliest memories are home sweet home. Mm. They've eradicated that part. Yeah, Not yeah. me. 
Jamie. Jamie. Oh, it's Jamie. Jamie. J and me. Remember the he named the album are, the Integrity. Way, EA asked who stayed true. Yeah. J and me. Uh, I don't follow no sound. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Follow. Just so wait, 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 wait. wait because people can't hear, bro. So, he, he, someone in the room my said My cousin Rich. said Wretch. And obviously, I love Wretch. But that song of example, yeah. Water Farm, doesn't feel very don't black. Know, I don't know if he's put... <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't feel lo- loxy. It feels you know very. I mean? I'm going to the football. <laughs> it feels very pubsy. Yeah, yeah. It feels very 3 p.m. Let's get a little cheeky. But we don't hold it against him. Did Giggs have one? No. He didn't have one, did he? But maybe the close. Maybe the closest one, and it isn't really that though. Was it? Maybe don't go there lightly. Don't but it wasn't. Up. Was it don't people go there? People gonna be people. Ain't nobody gonna change. Are you mad? That has got soul. So you yeah, don't go, go there. Game. Yeah, man. Geek stay true, game. man. Geek stay true. B.O.B. has never been this gully. Yeah, came to the hood. Do you know what? That's the only reason why I asked it because of B.O.B. in it. Like what B.O.B. was doing. Even though he had some rhythms as well, to be My fair. My brother, that's the first time I heard B.O.B. Man. 2010. So Giggs and Jamie, that's why Giggs they done that song together. And look how yeah. much of a classic that tune is. Yeah. So man. man, stay true artists, man. Stay true to yourself. It, you have examples now where you can see in the long run what it looks like when you stay true to yourself. Have we got howlers? Obviously, due to my wonderful children, I love so dearly, it was difficult to uh, get them prepared adequately the way I would have liked. But we have howlers. Irish guy? Irish guy? Someone messaged Irish me today guy. and said, um, talk about the horse. Okay, of course I've got the Irish guy. It's not just the Irish guy though, is it? Animals seem to be having a lot of interaction with human beings. Yeah. All right. So let's go talk about the Irish guy first because they tried to delete the video of Twitter, but I have an iPhone. I can screen record. <laughs> Why not? I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. You don't know what happened? Well, we there is a, we can't watch it anyway, but I'm going to show you obviously for legal reasons we won't be able to show it on youtube but you choose where you would like to watch it if you would like it i'll send you my email i'll send it over this man deserves to be locked up he can't work with animals he can't work with animals there's one thing i'm going to say yeah for me personally and i know some people always say oh poet oh, you know you're always trying to put people down oh you're a bit racist or that no but all those examples i find i don't see brothers doing this I don't see sisters doing this. So what do you expect me to do? I'm just giving you the information I get. So this is what I'm gonna say. Michael Hanley, I want you so far away from animals that you might as well just feel like you're in the boys toilets for the rest of your life. I don't feel like you should be next to insects, let alone any other animal. What you're doing to me doesn't make sense. Michael Hanley has something called comfort carriages. You look very uncomfortable uh, in this video right here. You're from Dublin, you're from Ireland. So I have to be very careful because you lot can fight. Mm, actually, Tyson Fury. Mm. But I can say when I press play on this video, you're going to see a man in a puffer jacket, as you can see. You're then going to see a man with horses. These are beautiful horses. Now the question I ask you, outside of the business of having comfort carriages, carriages I imagine that are for horses, Com- comfort or come comfort wait is this a play of words now not for me but maybe it was for him <laughs> hopefully he doesn't go to the gym because i don't want to go there if this is what people do because this young man left his phone in the pub his brethren's got it and they saw mr michael hanley bend down in front of a horse in his come foot carriage you yeah 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 oh my god that is outrageous. Now that is outrageous. I could say hold your horses. <laughs> but 
But I'm just gonna leave it to this and say this, man. I find this very serious. You know, I'm not really a massive fan. Hold on, wait, wait, hold on, wait, stop. Oh, you want me to wait? Stop. You want me to wait, do you? Wait, stop. What should I wait for, Chucky? (laughs) Wait, someone found his phone. Someone found his phone in the pub that he left, and then they seen him bent over my little pony. So when I said the world's going crazy, I lie. I lie. Why? Bro, um, when I said, yeah, the world's going crazy, man are out here having sex with animals. Man are out here bending over for a horse. Does it stop there? Did he, I've got another oh, this video. This is going to be crazy. This is a crazy question. Oh, they've deleted the video. I've got a crazy question. How crazy? I've got a question, but it is crazy. Did, do, <laughs> who's watched the video? Did you watch the video? I know the whole thing. Have you seen enough? I, I've seen enough. Did the horse get his dick in the ass? That's, yeah. In, that's... Are you going? I've got more. No, Chucky, I've got another one. There's a frog that runs in a vagina. You think I'm lying? I've got a frog running in a vagina. I I'm just. Farm. Does he die? Does he die? Bro, I hope he does. A horse's wood is not a joke, you know. You know, I looked away, yeah, and I tried to exit him without looking, and I just heard him grunt, bro. Oh, boy. Now, as you can see, I was going to show you another video because we can't just stop at Michael Hanley. You're just doing too much oh, abuse. Stop. It says the post violated the X rules. Now, the post I was going to show you as well, Chucky, is a young lady laying down, but her skin complexion. It's slightly towards the Don't tell me she takes this wood side. as well. She takes this wood from a horse as well. No, she's laying on her back and all you can see is the vagina. And do you know what else you see next to the vagina? Something if you kiss it, it becomes a prince. So before the prince, what are you? Don't leap. You're damn right, a frog. The frog runs into the vagina and all I see is the little leg. A tail out. The legs outside of the panan bread. So when I showed this to a female, I just said to her, Wait, the whole frog's inside the panan bread, but the legs sticking out. Because it wants to stick it out as well. And there's a man holding the frog leg. The man's holding the frog leg with the frog inside the panan. This is out. I don't know what's going on. Well, it was enraged for the frog. world over again, bro. I'm not This is what I believe. This is fucking crazy. No, we must talk about them things there so because on, wait, we have to this let people know what's going on in the world. This is what I'm saying. And wait, did someone? What? Whose phone? How did anyone see that? What? Wait, what's going on? <laughs> this is crazy, blood. Do you know what was crazy? I'm gonna be so real. I spoke to a female who worked with mental patients, mental ill patients. Yeah. I said this guy must be some form of mental ill. She said, no, every human has needs. <laughs> Okay, that so basically, just in case you didn't hear, um, Poet's cousin said that he, oh my God, spoke to a person who deals with people who um, looks after mental, people who have like mental health issues or whatever. And you said that the person who done this must have mental health issues. And she said, no, everybody has needs. Let's stop it there because something you need is something you can't live without. I've lived without a horse in my ass for a little while, so I don't know if we need that. I'll tell you another thing we don't need. We don't need your wife going on OnlyFans Good. and not consulting you. Because guess what? You might get upset like Joe Smith. That's right, Mr. Joe Smith, my brother. You got with her when she was an adult porn star. You then tried to do what, and this is not my words, these are words that exist in society. If I've taken them and thrown them on this camera, I do apologize apologize if I offend anyone, but it's not my intention. They say you can't turn a hoe into a housewife. I'm not suggesting she was a hoe, but this is what it says over here. I'm just a messenger. Don't shoot me, especially if you've got a gun. It really hurts. So, Joe Smith's wife decided to jump back on OnlyFans. (laughs) He's an ex-basketball player. What do you mean she jumped back in? Doing what? So she was claiming that life was getting a little bit difficult and Strong. she needed some additional funds. And so she decided to put her vagina, the same vagina that frogs like to jump in, on OnlyFans. And uh, Did she tell her man. She didn't tell her man. A man had to find out on OnlyFans. So if I was the woman, Wait, would I would have said, well, what were you, you doing? doing there? 
Either way, she ends up on TMZ crying, talking about how he left. So, Joe, do you know what, big man? Good on you. You have to leave like a bad weave if that's not the place that you want to be. Yeah, that's nuts, man. Look, babes, if we've got, if we're, co- if we're going through hard times and stuff like that, and we're trying to make an extra buck, consult me and let's consult each other, in fact, and let's look at how we can make a spare money. Don't take it upon yourself to go on OnlyFans and start showing off your banana bread and don't tell, man. What country did it happen in? America. And there's another reason why we should close America. Oh, there's plenty of reasons, to be fair. I've asked for nine months. Actually, ten months, because I heard pregnancy, the child's actually in your stomach for like nine months, three weeks or something like that. So essentially, it's more ten months than it is nine months. So let's close America for ten months, Mm. do a nice little refurbish, and we all come back. Yeah. And we don't have to read stories like father son shot dead by neighbor over noisy argument in that. Brooklyn apartment building. So the video footage I don't want to show because this is not really someone having sex with an, an animal. This is actually someone losing their life, which I yeah. don't really find too funny. I see an argument take place. Yeah. I see a man come forward to another man on the staircase with scissors in his hand. And he had scissors in his hand. Mm. So the guy must have felt I believe somewhat threatened. Now there is no audio so I don't know what the verbal exchange is, mm. but with the scissors in his hand, that guy decided to make a decision. Mm. I'm gonna shoot your blood clot. So he shot him. The son came across. He shot him. Mm. Now, the only thing I will say is the dad almost got away, but the wife closed the door. <laughs> don't laugh, Chucky. It's a serious situation. The wife closed the door. Let me do that again. <laughs> the wife closed the door. She <laughs> did close the door still. Did, did you think I like? Did, you think, did I well, lie? She didn't close it. Close it. Oh, she didn't close it. Close. Well, she didn't open it. Open it. Did she, Chucky? <laughs> <laughs> she ran in and she closed, closed the door. Yeah. Now, nah, what? I mean it like you know when you get the door and you. Got, I have the video. We don't have to do this stuff. We can take. Yeah, 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 yeah. I hear it, but she closed the door still. The guy that then did done the shooting confronted the police and he was also killed. Yeah. Three lives lost over an argument. Yeah. Close America. They were neighbors. Close it. Did you ever see that in the Australian version of neighbors? No, Don't smile. No. Don't smile. <laughs> no. Just smile. I know you're not. Chucky is. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> but do you know what as well, yeah? Because I- You're smiling. So this is only a matter of time, man. <laughs> Like people were talking about, what? oh, you know what? The guy came with scissors, or whatever, self defense, and whatever else. I'm like, nah, bro. The man was his back was turned, and then he started licking him. Do you know what? I, do you know the part of where he could have <laughs> shot him, and it would have been okay, is when my man came to him with the scissors. As he's coming with the scissors, you could have backed it up. Yeah, if you took it, yeah, him. yeah, yeah, I hear you, I hear yeah. you. Because then you don't know what's happening. So you yeah. might just go, what were you doing? Back. Or at least take it out and say, yo, in, what, yo, yo ease big up, man. Brother. You know what yeah. I'm saying, cuz? Let's. The woman let's chill dragged out. him away. He do- still doesn't even take the strap out immediately. She drags him away, <laughs> Come, he sort of comes back, then she sort of drags him again and then he backs it out. Then not only does he shoot him and shoot the son, he goes back to the Don and shoots him in his head. That is outrageous, bro. No. I think that's, prob- I think that's what it was because he was saying, or someone was saying, they were neighbors for time. Mm-hmm. Apparently what had happened was um, the, na- the people who got shot, they don't have, uh, carpet or whatever the floors are like really thin so they're walking up and down making bad noise and he was just getting frustrated by that apparently he would be banging up on the things and tell them to calm down or just to stop so you could imagine that maybe the people upstairs are saying listen I pay rent here as well you know? exactly you get what I'm saying so look it is what it is you're just going to have to part with it and then that conversation just turns into next conversation before, before you know it now someone gets licked down it's, very unfortunate. I think it's even more unfortunate the son the son died in that. He was only twenty seven years old. So a woman loses her husband and her son and then has to deal with For what? The trauma. And then also she's got a daughter, so you can just imagine the, the trauma that that daughter will have to deal with as well for the rest of her life. It's mad. Now I'm so I'm sorry that I have to then just go and play some of this afterwards because I've decided that at the end of every howlers, I want to play something lighthearted. We shouldn't end necessary. Suit. We should end with a little laugh. Let's end nice because that gives you what was in Pandora's box. The last thing was hope. So I'm gonna give you, arguably for me, top three funniest videos to ever hit the net for me. Um, Langan Village it was called. 
and basically there was a young lad and he looked awful similar to me. I thought I was fighting in the mirror, right? Come outside the nightclub, I was like, do I know you from somewhere? And he goes, do I know you? Do you know? And he had, he had a Celtic jersey on, but he had, he had the green and the yellow one, right? And I was, I was about to throw a punch. And then he, he, he looked at me in the eyes and I go, do I? And he goes, am I your father? I said to him, and he goes to me, am I your son? And we just hugged it out. Turns out that no relation at all. And I just headbutted him and <laughs> taken away. <laughs> great, great video. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. as you know, my conclusions for the howlers are people, man. Don't yeah, close America. Yeah, give a it a refurbish. And Joe Biden's a lizard. <laughs> what did you say? Keep your opinions to yourself. I'm trying to go America in two weeks. You're trying to get me cancelled. Hey, things you said now. thanks for listening, everyone. Yeah, love.